Well, hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the saxophone factory. And now we are working, let me move the camera a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, we're working on the advanced, on the Rubank Advanced Method, Volume 1. We are on Unit 4. Uh, unit 4 starts off with page 6, number 4. <coughs> we are still in the key of C. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. And the next uh, item on um, Unit 4 is page 22, number 4. We're going to play the top. Okay? One, two, okay? <sighs> That's pretty, it's pretty tough going when you're playing off the PDF on, on the computer and you have to keep scrolling down <laughs> while you're playing. Well, I, I think we did it pretty well. I think I remembered part of it. Uh, so there you go. That was um, the, uh, again, on Unit 4, page 22, number 4. All right, page 45, number 4. Page 54, let me move this a little bit. There you go. We're at page 54, numbers 7, 8, and 9, the fingering exercises. <clears throat> this first fingering exercise, <clears throat> actually the first two you can use the side, the side C that we showed you before, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you again. It's the, the, the side C is the B 
fingering pressed down. And with the addition of the middle side key, there we have a C. So we would play one and two and three and four and right. And and this and this first exercise number seven is to get us used to using that. That way, when we need it, it's right there. You know, it's, it's first thing. It's the first thing on, 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 on our brain. All right, number seven with the repeat one and two and ready. <laughs> Now, the, the second measure of number seven goes from D, excuse me, B to D. And, and, and really, it's, if you use the, the regular way, going from this to, of course, this, it sort of makes you play it smoothly, and it's, and, and it's tough. Now, some of you may be thinking, why don't we use the side D? I'll tell you why you don't use the side D, because it sounds like crap. All right, you don't believe me. Let's you let's try it. That's why you don't use it because it sounds like crap. You have to use a regular D. Being able to coordinate all those fingers. That's why we're doing fingering exercises. All right, let's do number eight. Number eight. I'm going to use the regular fingerings for, for for B to C to start with. And then on the repeat, I'm going to use the side fingering. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. You should have been able to hear the difference. Because here's the regular fingering for C. Here's a side fingering for C. A regular fingering. Side fingering. The side fingering is a little bit more open. Side fingering. Regular fingering. Sorry. Side fingering. He's a little bit more open. All right, number nine. Regular fingering throughout. Ready? Go. Easy enough. All right, that was page 54, numbers seven, eight, and nine. Page 60, number three. Uh, we're going to play that just like we played number one with the 16th notes. Here we go. Let's see. And there is... Okay. We've got a, uh, a special trill fingering from B flat to C. Remember, trills go up, always up from the note written. Remember that. Always up to, to the next note in the key signature. So it's not up a half step, it's not up a whole step, it's up to the next note in the key signature. Unless there's an alteration. And here there are no alterations. Here we go. Oh, we have a B flat in the key signature. Here we go. Uh, number three. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. One, two, ready? <gasps> Talk about the trill from A. The A trill goes to the B flat. 
Why? Because it's the next note in the key signature. So all you have to do is, here's the, here's the A, and then you add the B flat to it, right? The next note goes from B flat to what? To C, because C is the next note in the key signature. So we are fingering B flat in, in, in the traditional way, and all you have to do is release the B key. B flat C. While, while holding down the, the, the side key. You don't have to move both fingers. That's weird. Don't do that. Just the top finger. Let's see if we can get a picture of that. Good, good luck, Walsh. See, I'm not moving both fingers at the same time. Just the top one. There you are. All right. Oops. On to, um, I think we're still doing the next one, which is page, what is it? We're getting there. Hang on a second. Page 66. We'll be right back. All right. We're on page number 66, number one, which is the minuet from Orpheus Orf of the Deep. This is our fourth week working on, 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 this, on, this, on this little etude, right? Um, <clears throat> at this point, we should have all the dynamics incorporated, all the phrasings. We shouldn't be playing any wrong notes or wrong rhythms. Now the idea is to start to start playing it as musically as possible. Let's start. Let's start with this. Let's let's look at line three measure. No, sorry, line two, the last measure in that line. We have a C sharp in that measure. I'd like to introduce to you playing the C sharp, what we call either long. You, you heard it referred to as a long C sharp, or the closed C sharp. Now that fingering is. The low C sharp fingering. Oops, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bottom of the circle, down here, and the outside of the spatula. And we're going to use the octave key. Normally, you'd have a low C sharp. We're going to add the octave key. Now you're asking, why would you do that? Because the C sharp is the easiest fingering of all on the saxophone. Don't press any buttons down and just blow. And I'll tell you why. Because it's the timbre, it's the sound of the C sharp on the saxophone that we're going to try to make better. Here's the open C sharp. Now I'm going to now I'm going to play the closed C sharp. I'm going to try to now. The one caveat is going to be a little sharp, so you're going to have to adjust. Hear the difference? Open C sharp. Close C sharp. Now, <clears throat> you would ask, what difference does it make? Well, coming from like a D, like in this measure here, where the, the note before it is a D, you don't want... You'd rather... Wouldn't you? I would. All right. I'm going to try to use the, the closed C sharp for all the C sharps in the solo this time. There you go. <clears throat> One. Ready? Thank you. 
Next week, we'll talk about attacks, hate that word, and releases. How we start a note and how we finish a note in conjunction with this solo. Hope you enjoyed uh, Unit 4. We'll be back with Unit 5 as soon as we can get there, I promise. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. It's been great. If you if this is your first time here, please um, subscribe, hit, hit the notification bell. Um, I recorded all of the Rubank Elementary book. If you're just starting, please go back to that. Get all that lovely deliciousness out, out of that method before you come over here to the to the advanced to the advanced one. If you've been with me the whole time, thank you so much. Uh, our goal to the end of this calendar year is to get 2,500 subscribers. 2,500. Um, the more uh, the, the more subscribers we have, the more hours viewed we have, the better things are. So we we'll certainly love your help. All right, until we see you again, keep practicing.